In this problem, we must have continuity of current. So we know that the conduction current flowing through the wire, I could put a C here just to make sure we're, we know we're talking about conduction current, must be equal to the displacement current that is flowing in between the two plates of the capacitor. And from Ampere's law, we know that the displacement current is equal to d d d t. Now in our case, we want to know all the displacement current flowing between the plates of the capacitor. So if we were to define a surface, we could pick any place here in between the two plates, let's just say halfway between the two plates. We could define a surface here, S, and we could say uh, we're going in the downward direction, so that we're going to take the surface normal to be downwards, meaning that we're going to look at the flux, or the displacement current, going through this surface in the downward direction. And so that means we take dd dt, and we would integrate it, it's this area, so it's a double integral over s, and we're looking at the flux through the surface, so we're going to take a dot product of dd dt with n hat and integrating over ds. So let's see if we can simplify this. We are going to assume that the d field <coughs> is approximately equal over the whole extent of this capacitor. Uh, you know, we might get fringing fields on the edges and so forth. We're going to just ignore those and for this simplified problem, and say that the D field is equal everywhere across the plates of the capacitor. So this integral then just becomes uh, multiplication times A. So we get dd dt times A, the area of that surface, area of the capacitor plate. And then also we can relate the D field to the E field using the constitutive relations. So d is equal to epsilon e, so I really should have a vector over this because this is a vector quantity, has a direction associated with it. And so then we have epsilon e dt times a. And the epsilon, the material permittivity, doesn't change anywhere in the capacitor. So we can, and it also doesn't change over time, so we can pull this out so we have then epsilon a, and then we have de dt. Well, we can then write this as um, epsilon a de dt. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply times d over d. And the reason is, we want to be able to relate the voltage to the electric field. Since we're looking for a relationship between the current and the voltage, we want to change our electric field to the voltage uh, between the plates of the capacitor. So in general, voltage, if we integrate the electric field, or DL, then we'll get the voltage. So if we integrate the electric field, between the two plates, which is a distance d, we will get the voltage. So in order to be able to put a voltage in here, we need to be able to multiply times d. But if we multiply times d to not change our result, we need to also divide by d. So this means now that we have d v d t, and that's because uh, v just changes over time, it's not changing in space, and then we can recognize this epsilon a over d as being the capacitance which was given right here. That was a value that was given. So now we have i is equal to c dv dt, and we can see that the covoltage current relationship for a capacitor, the origin of it comes from Ampere's law which is one of Maxwell's equations.